The GigaPress casting machine is shaping up to be the heart of Tesla's manufacturing process as they move into their next phase of vehicle production in Texas, Germany, and China. We know the GigaPress is key in building the Tesla Model Y and an even bigger version will be used for the upcoming Cybertruck build. But Tesla's most ambitious casting projects are still to come. So let's talk about that. Hey Elonites and Musketeers, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. The idea of using die casting for vehicle parts is something that Tesla has been working on for quite a while now. It kind of seems like a casted frame for the Model Y was the plan all along, they just weren't able to perfect the art before the time came to begin production. We know the reports in the summer of 2019 that Tesla was working on building their own giant casting machine to produce the Model Y frame. In June 2019, Elon Musk said, when we get the big casting machine, it'll go from 70 parts to one with a significant reduction in capital expenditure on all the robots to put those parts together. The process of die casting is the same method used to make Hot Wheels cars and other small metal things like that. They heat metal to the point that it becomes a thick molten goo and then press that into a hollow mold. Cool it to harden and pop out a new solid piece of metal in whatever shape you desire. Tesla had this idea for a multi-directional casting machine with these drawings that show the Model Y body surrounded by presses from all angles. That particular Tesla design never came into being. Instead, we've seen the GigaPress casting machine built by the IDRA group arrive on the Tesla production line. By coincidence, I guess, or maybe synchronicity, at the same time that Tesla was trying to figure out their own casting technology to build cars, this Italian engineering company called IDRA were working on a giant casting press that they hoped would someday be used to make electric vehicles. Idris says that they started working on the machine three years ago. They didn't design the press for Tesla. It just happens that Tesla was the first and so far only customer to make an order. These machines are epic, by the way. The Model Y GigaPress is 19.7 meters long, seven meters wide, and six meters high. It's basically the size of a small house and the machine weighs in at 430 tons. The press uses 6,000 tons of force to push molten metal into a hollow mold. The precision needed to make this process actually work for such large vehicle parts is kind of insane. The metal injection to the mold has to happen very quickly, but also be perfectly smooth throughout the stroke of the press. Any amount of turbulence in the flow of metal can create pockets or imperfections in the casted piece. The platon section of the press, the piece that actually moves the liquid metal, is a humongous chunk of solid metal that is 3.6 meters squared in size, forged from one single piece, and weighs in at 64 tons on its own. The result is that the IDRA press can make an entire vehicle frame in just three sections, front, middle, and rear. There are currently three of these machines in existence, all owned by Tesla, and IDRA has plans to deliver nine more in 2021. Now that's not to say that just anyone could buy one of these IDRA machines and start casting vehicles with it. Tesla brings a very important element to the party and that's their own proprietary aluminum alloy. Tesla's special blend of aluminum is designed specifically for the die casting process and the goal for the metal is to maintain high yield strength and high conductivity while performing in vehicle component roles. Tesla wrote in their 2020 patent application, the alloy has the proper fluidity to ensure that it wets the entire length of a mold and the mold is properly formed and such that the alloy resists hot tearing and retains the desired yield strength when the cast solidifies. Inventing a new aluminum alloy didn't happen overnight though. It looks like this is a project that Tesla has been working on for years now probably with the idea of die casting in mind the entire time. Back in 2015, Elon hired this guy, Charles Kuhlman, who has a PhD in material science and engineering and was the director of product design for Apple computers before he came to Tesla. Charles led the development of new aluminum alloys for Apple products from 2012 to 2015 and was likely the person in charge of developing the aluminum case that holds your Apple watch. 
Before Apple, this guy was working with a materials engineering company called Quest Tech, where he was designing both new engineering tools and new metal alloys. There are plenty of other clues along the way that we won't get into, but it is safe to say that Elon has been plotting this idea for a whole new casting process for at least six years. I think they just happened to find Idris, who were building the exact machine that they needed as a vessel for the new metal process. And because Tesla was thinking about this years and years ahead of everyone else, it means the competition is well back in their dust as usual. Tesla has patented their casting alloy, and I'm sure this isn't one of the patents that they are just going to give away for free. So any competitor would have to start from scratch, and no other car maker has given any indication that this kind of process is even on their radar. So now that we know all that, why go through all of this trouble just to build cars? Well, the simple answer is efficiency. By casting one big chunk, you're eliminating hundreds of smaller tasks that need to be executed to build a frame. The old way of doing things is to have dozens of small parts that are all either stamped or casted on their own. Then those components are all bonded together, either with welds or rivets or even glue. Yeah, there is probably glue or epoxy holding some parts of your car together right now. That's just the way it is. Not everything can be welded. It's just not possible. Aluminum in particular doesn't hold up very well to being welded. In previous Tesla vehicles, particularly the Model 3, the process resulted in an insane patchwork of junk under the cars. Engineering consultant Sandy Monroe was famously very critical of the Model 3. He said in a 2020 presentation, we were very critical of Tesla when we first started on their vehicles. The gaps were horrific. The weld splatter was everywhere, nothing fit. But Sandy is a reasonable dude, and he's come around from being a major Tesla critic to being one of Tesla's biggest fans and the new casting process is one of the biggest reasons for that. He also said of the Model Y rear frame, this is the biggest casting we have seen in a car company. This is just spectacular. As the owner of a 2018 Model 3, one of the first ever built, it's not exactly reassuring to know that there's a horror show of shoddy work going on inside my car. I could have lived without that information, but the point is that Tesla is working really hard to do better, that's what counts. My next Tesla is going to be even more dope. And to be fair, I haven't had many issues so far with my car. But moving on, this is pretty easy math. One solid piece is better than 70 little bits all stuck together. Then there is the added efficiency on the production line. All of those robots that were in charge of bonding all of those pieces together and assembling the frame, they've been replaced by one casting machine. So. I guess we were replaced by robots, and now robots have been replaced by robots. So at least we can feel a little bit better about that, I guess. Anyways, Elon has said that by switching the Model Y production over to the Gigapress casting, they'll be able to eliminate something like 60% of all robots from the production line. That means for new plants like the one in Berlin and the one in Texas, they never have to install those robots to begin with. The casting machine basically pays for itself in the amount of money saved on welding robots. Probably. I mean, I don't know how much gigapresses or welding robots cost. I'm just going on what makes sense to me. And I'm assuming that them doing this is because it's financially cheaper. By going down a smaller, cheaper, and faster production line, Tesla are massively increasing their profit margins while actually making a significantly better car. That's just nuts. It's good for everyone. You don't see this kind of thing often where it's a win-win-win across the board. There's no downside that I can think of, and I'm usually not shy to point out when Tesla has a downfall in their ideas. Okay, so we've got the Model Y figured out. The rear section casting is in production right now, and the very first front section castings are currently being made for the first time at Giga Texas. According to IDRA, by the end of this year, there should be a total of 12 Gigapress machines in the world, making an average of three machines per Tesla factory. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we go big. Tesla has already announced that their next big order from IDRA will be an 8,000 ton press for Giga Texas. This more powerful casting machine will be responsible for producing the frame for the Cybertruck. This will obviously be a much bigger and stronger component than what we've seen so far, 
The Cybertruck body will also be a one-piece design, but it's not made through casting. The body of a Cybertruck is made from a big sheet of stainless steel that is actually being bent and stamped into shape. It's the same idea as casting, just a different process. That will also be fast, efficient, and cheap to accomplish while making an exceptionally strong and consistent product. Now here's where we get into some speculation. Tesla might be going even bigger still. We're talking over 9,000, not power levels, obviously. We're still talking about tons of, of pressing force, not Dragon Ball Z. And the 9,000 ton press is a new rumor that just popped up recently and no one knows exactly what to make of it. We got word in May that Idril were building new machines in China that are capable of 9,000 tons of force, the highest we've seen so far. And unfortunately, that's about all we know right now. This information seems to have come from just one source, a Chinese social media post that was made on April 23rd. The post also includes four photos of a very large machine that certainly looks like an Idra press. The machine is surrounded by a crowd of people and they're in some kind of warehouse, but we're not told where that is. Unfortunately, again, that's all we really have to go on here, which is not much, but we can make some educated guesses. Is this press even being made for Tesla? Could it be going to some other company entirely? That is possible. I haven't seen anything that would indicate that Idra are supplying exclusively to Tesla. In theory, they could sell any kind of press to any company that wants one. But with that being said, everything we've seen so far points to Tesla being the only company that is really able to put these machines to good use. But then again, this is China. There could be all kinds of stuff going on that we just haven't heard about yet. A writer for the website Tesmanian has suggested that this machine is being made for a company called Ruli Group, a Chinese business that apparently sells air brake systems power steering systems, and other related products. But there's been no further information about why they would be buying this machine or what they would be doing with it. So let's say that it is Tesla who ordered the machine. What would they be using it for? Could it be related to the Cybertruck? No, absolutely not. If it's in China, then there would be no connection with the Cybertruck. Could it have something to do with the Tesla Semi? That's definitely a bigger vehicle that would demand more power if it were being casted, but probably not. It really looks like the Tesla Semi is being made for America. I guess there is the possibility that Tesla would be looking to market the Semi in China sometime in the future. The Chinese love electric trains and buses. It would make a lot of sense that they would welcome an electric transport truck as well. So the 9,000 ton press could be step one towards introducing a version of the Tesla Semi to China. I'd say that makes sense, though I'm not 100% on board with that theory. The theory that does come up the most often, and the one that I agree with the most as well, is that this largest gigapress will be the engine that creates the smallest Tesla, the affordable $25,000 Tesla vehicle that we know is coming sometime in the next few years, maybe, hopefully, by 2023. And all of the rumors so far have pointed to this car being developed and manufactured in China. So that all tracks. The reason that this compact hatchback style Tesla would need an even bigger press than even the Cybertruck would be if they're going to cast the entire frame of the car in one single motion. This would be incredibly hard to do, knowing what we know now about the casting process. They would need an incredibly large mold that would need to be filled with a ton of molten aluminum. Remember that all the liquid metal needs to move very fast to fill the entire mold perfectly before it starts to cool, but it also needs to happen perfectly smoothly for the aluminum to transfer with zero turbulence for a flawless casting. It's going to be a very complex process to pull off. It won't come easy. But just imagine how lean the production line could be if most of the car popped out of a casting press in one solid chunk. The speed of production would be amazing, which Tesla is going to need because once Tesla becomes affordable to most people, then most people are going to want a Tesla. And if they can deliver a car that is still really good for a price point that starts at 25 grand US, then this is going to be the thing that secures Tesla as the biggest company on the planet. It's hard to doubt that that would be the case. But again, we don't know for sure. 
I don't know when we will find out. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll be sure to come back to this topic as soon as we have new information to report. In the meantime, let us know your theories for the Gigapress in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more Tesla news and speculation. We are going to be hosting a Tesla tequila giveaway in the next few weeks, so you definitely want to be subscribed to the newsletter in order to participate. We send out one email per week, and it's a really fun and easy read to catch up on all things Elon Musk related. There's a link down below. When you do sign up, be sure to check your various inboxes and move us over to the main inbox so your valuable Tesla space info doesn't get mixed in with the spam or promotions. If you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.